everyone. This is Bill Griffin. Welcome to the Different Type Podcast. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Uh, appreciate you watching. And today I have Mr. Michael Owens, who is candidate for the Secretary of State in Georgia. And he resides in Mableton. He was a uh, uh, United States Marine Corps for eight years, is a currently uh, information security officer for Equifax, and was also the former chair of the Cobb County Democrat Party, and you also have two children. That's so, correct. Uh, well, I appreciate you doing this, Mr. Owens. Of course, no problem. Would, happy would, to be you, here would you like me to call you Mr. Owens or Michael? Michael, please. Okay, well, thank you for doing this, Michael. Sure, uh, of course. So I'm going to get started. What what distinguishes you from the other uh, Democrat candidates for Secretary of State? Sure. Thanks. Thanks for the question. You know, I think, first of all, I I'd probably say that, you know, being on a Democratic ballot um, across the board for Democratic candidates, there's a lot of things that are, quite frankly, the same, right, from, from the same kind of basic aspect of wanting to expand access to the ballot uh, and want to make sure that, you know, we, we continue to kind of uphold uh, there's things that allow more people to be able to vote. But, you know, my truly distinguishing qualities comes from a couple of things. Number one, you know, you mentioned I'm the former chair of the Democratic Party in Cobb, and I'm really proud of that. And not because of the seats that we flipped, you know, or, or, or getting Lucy McBeth elected to Congress, but I'm most proud of the fact that we were able to expand uh, access to the ballot for over 486,000 people in Cobb County. And as you know, Cobb is one of the largest counties in the state of Georgia. Um, so the ability to, for people to have their voices heard, that, that's what democracy is truly about. You know, so you know, long before anyone was talking about, you know, massive turnouts or, or things that I was doing as the chair, you know, we're really working with my data committee to take a hard look at um, early voting hours and, and early voting locations. I found out within Cobb County, we were uh, we were severely limited, shall I say, with the number of early voting hours. So, you know, I was really able to have success in expanding access to the ballot, getting more early vote lo voting locations, getting more early voting hours to the people of Cobb. And that, that's really what made the difference there. So I have success, you know, in actually expanding access to the ballot and ensuring that more people are able to have their voices heard. But on the other side of, of, of the uh, equation, I truly stand out and differentiate myself in this election, uh, not only from other Democratic candidates, but from anyone else that's running, quite frankly, from anyone else that's running for Secretary of State in the entire country. And that is the fact that, you know, I have a 20 year background in cybersecurity, particularly in critical and securing critical information and critical infrastructure systems, uh, such as our election systems. You know, the, the cornerstone of our democracy is about people having trust and faith in our election systems. And, and unfortunately, that's been eroded. It's been eroded because we've had data breaches, been eroded because we've had data leaks of our own personal voter information has, has unfortunately not been taken good stewards of. Uh, we've had you know, uh, attacks from you know, Russia and, and North Korea and the like, just on critical information systems, period, right? I mean, we all remember the reason you mentioned Equifax, the reason I'm at Equifax now is because in 2017, they had the world's largest cybersecurity breach. You know, I went there, I was one of the, the early people that was recruited to go to Equifax after that and help to turn things around. You know, in 2018, when uh, Russia had invaded Ukraine the first time, they marched into, into Crimea. I was one of 16 cybersecurity professionals to actually go to Ukraine. I was in Kiev, uh, working on the ground to ensure that we could stop Rus the Russian uh, aggression in cyberspace. And, you know, again, bring it back domestically, whether it's Coca-Cola or Delta uh, or Ernst & Young and now Equifax. I've done this work of protecting data, of protecting information. I'm a certified information security auditor. So what I bring to the table is truly unique in the aspect that we have to rebuild trust and faith in our elections through competence, through having someone who has a clear plan and objective of what needs to be done, who isn't going to get marred down into the, to the bickering uh, and, and fighting about, you know, uh, issues that, of le legislation and litigation. I mean, those things are obviously important. There's a place in time for it. But I want to be laser focused on ensuring that I'm able to bring my wealth of experience and knowledge directly to the table to be able to safeguard our information, safeguard our, our election systems, um, and ensure that we're doing everything we can to make sure that uh, we have fair, free, and secure elections. 
What do you, on elections, what do you think about voting by mail? What should there, what, should it be universal voting by mail or should there be some, should be uh, no excuse voting by mail or? Yeah, I, you know, I, I believe in a healthy mix of options when it comes to voting, right? I think we, we, we are advanced enough, we are technically savvy enough and with the right people and processes and tools, there shouldn't really be limitations on the types of voting we can have, right? I mean, I think if you have sound, solid, again, policies and procedures around that, you know, my goal would give would be to give people uh, varied options, whether they want to vote by mail, whether they want to go during, at, you know, during early voting, whether they want to do the time-honored tradition of going to vote on election day. I, again, I think we should be able to uh, adequately accommodate people for how and where they want to vote. Look, you know, uh, providing more options does not make us less secure. On the contrast, making it harder to vote does not make our elections more secure, right? We have to ensure that we're doing the things up front. You know, as, as Secretary of State, I want to make sure that I'm leading the way, that I'm leading the charge when it comes to setting uh, the framework that all 159 counties should adhere to, to ensure that we're doing the things necessary, that people will feel comfortable no matter where they vote or no matter when they vote. And, you know, Bill, I can tell you, as, as the former chair of the, of the Cobb County Democrats, I can tell you that, um, and, and talking with others, talking with Republican friends of mine as well, that, you know, it's a concern that everyone has, right? Because everyone wants to make sure their vote counts. And everyone wants to feel comfortable about the fact their vote counts. And, you know, as Secretary of State, I want to build that level of transparency and trust that people can feel good about voting no matter what way they decide to or no matter when they decide to. So, uh, a lot of people have a problem with voting by mail, uh, allowing it because, for example, what there's nothing to prevent an apathetic voter for selling their vote or someone who's head of a household, a friend of mine, maybe in jest, maybe not, he says, I got four votes now. Oh, who says he has four about votes? That? What do you think about that? That people ought to vote in secret. I mean, look, there's we, we there's a certain level we can get to this about. Uh, again, I'm a certified information security auditor. I understand in depth about how we have to have chain of custody and how it's important to understand uh, and mitigate uh, fraud in any instance or any sense of the matter. But let's not fool ourselves with the fact that you know talking about what candidates you like or talking about who you want to support our kitchen table discussions, right? The water cooler discussions uh, for a lot of people. So the idea that, you know, myself as a candidate, you know, I get Mr. Griffin that's gonna support me, chances are that, you know, if you have a spouse, if you have children, those votes are gonna come right along with it. So the idea that, you know, each and every single instance is completely separate, uh, that, that's really not true. I mean, part, part of what we do when we're campaigning is we hope that if we can get that one person in that household, or we can get that one person in that church, if we can get that one person, you know, in, in that home, that that one vote would then turn into three or four or five. That's part of campaigning. That's part of endearing ourselves to voters and hope that the word spreads around. So you don't have a problem with people voting by mail, they could sell their vote, or that's that, that um, you don't have of a problem. Of course I have a problem if, if people decide to sell their vote, right? Um, but but I we don't have any any uh, proof at all that that's actually what's happening, right? I mean- How would you prove it? it? It's proven that people are selling their votes. How would you prove it? It would be virtually impossible oh, I mean, to prove. I, I mean, it, it's, it, how would you prove that uh, you are convincing your wife to vote for me? It, I guess what I'm getting at is the if there is no assurance if someone doesn't vote in secret that they could they could be uh, coerced or intimidated into voting for someone else. Um, you, you know, the, you can you can talk to just, the, just every the single night. Just the example they have. Pardon me. You can have a discussion with their wife every single night to get her to vote for Michael Owens, whether you know she's had her eye on someone else. Is that coercion? Are you like you know? Are you talking her into it? Yeah, that, that is it, right? So, you know, the, the idea of persuading voters is part of the conversation of democracy. That is what this is about, right? It's my job to go out and persuade people to vote for me. Um, that's a far cry from getting people to sell their votes to someone else, right? That's, that's you know, that, that's, uh, that's illegal, that's nefarious. Um, and no, I'm not in any way going to support anything by way of that. But I think persuading voters, absolutely. Um, you know, back to your question about 
you know, drop boxes or absentee ballots. Again, I, I think the idea is that we have to have accountability. We have to have availability. We have to have integrity with our elections. Absolutely. That's that's what I do for a living. You know, the, the cornerstone of, of what I do as an information security officer is to ensure the confidentiality, the availability, and the integrity of systems that I'm responsible for. You know, I've done that at the largest companies in the world. I will continue to do that. That Again, that is a unique expertise and skill set that I have to bring to the table. And that rises above any partisan politics, that rises above, quite frankly, any candidate that's on the ballot. Because to me, as Secretary of State, I don't care what letters behind your name. It doesn't matter, right? My goal is fair, free, secure, and efficient elections. Whoever gets the most votes at the end of the day, that's who wins the elections. My job is to make sure that our elections are carried out in a dutiful and trustworthy manner. Do you have a lot of constituents that voice concern about not voting in secret? No. Do you, if you vote, if you vote by mail, there's no assurance of. I mean, I'll move on to something else, but I'll just make sure I understand this. If you're voting by mail, there is no assurance you will vote secretly. You can. That's because why are you saying that? I could take my vote and vote in front of other people, <laughs> and fill out my ballot in front of other people. Or I could observe, uh, in the case of this head of the household I'm talking about, he could observe his children. Hey, I'm voting for Trump. I want you to vote for Trump. I want to watch you do it, and I want to take your ballot and drop it off for you. There's no different you telling, from doing no different that, right? you telling your. It's no different you telling your adult child that you know you got to vote for whoever you want, or I'm not going to pay your car note next month. Right, but when they go in the when they go in the booth, there's no way to know who they voted for. I could do that all day long, but that, I don't know who they're voting for. If it's yeah, right. Well, it's the same applies, right? You can go in the voting booth and and come out and say you voted for whoever whoever you want to, right? That's 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 of, of your choice. But you're um, not. You, I just make sure I understand. So you're not for mandatory secrecy. I'm not for mandatory secrecy in voting. Yes. Yeah, secret ballots are, are part of what should be upheld. Yeah, and I'm, I'm. What I'm saying is that what happens around your kitchen table and the conversations that you're having, that's that's amongst you and your family. I I, I don't advocate for what you know having. What are we going to have observers walk into your kitchen? No. I mean, I think that. Um, again, the idea of persuading people to vote, you know, because of familial or work connections or faith connections, that, that happens. That's, that's part of where we live today. What do you think about this uh, bill in Congress to federalize elections? It's called H.R. 1. What about it? What's your what's your? What do you think stance? about it? What, what do you advocate for federalizing elections in that way? Or No, I, I, you know, first of all, I'm running for Secretary of State of Georgia. Right. I'm not running for Congress. And I think the key thing that we have to understand with the Secretary of State's office is it's not a legislative role. Right. The role of Secretary of State does not have a vote, whether in, in under the Gold Dome or whether in Washington, D.C. at the Capitol. The, the role of the Secretary of State is to ensure that we have oversight of elections, um, that we carry them out in the way that we should. And under you know myself as Secretary of State, ensure that we're given the guidance and the leadership of the 159 county board of elections to ensure that they're doing their job, right? What happens in DC, what goes along with that, um, you know, is not under my purview as Secretary of State. Okay, Do, should it be legal for political operatives or other third parties to collect and drop off ballots at polling places? Uh, no. Okay. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> so the current, this is something that I understand the current Secretary of State I have to deal with. Uh, do you think the current Secretary of State should disqualify Marjorie Taylor Greene from running for re-election? Because I think that he's, my understanding is he's got to make that decision or not. Yeah, you know, I, I haven't followed that real close, to be honest with you, Bill. You know, I'm, I mean, we got early voting has already started. Elections are coming up really, really soon. Um, you know, and that that's not something I really have my have my eye on. So let me make sure you're you're saying someone. I mean, there's been plenty of Congress Congress people that actually won their office after they were charged and or indicted for crimes, and she's not charged or indicted for anything. So. You're saying you'd be open to disqualifying her? 
No, I'm saying that's not where my focus is. I'm saying I haven't followed that story. I mean, obviously, I know who our Secretary of State is. I know who Congresswoman uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is. That's about the extent of, of what I've followed. I understand. It just seems it seems like the ultimate form of voter suppression to keep people from voting for who they, keeping people off the ballot. But anyway, so you you mentioned this in your website. It says bolster cyber security and guard against foreign interference in our elections and other critical infrastructure. And you touched upon that a little bit. So I thought I thought you might want to talk about that a little more. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, and it's and it's not just from an election perspective. I think people uh, maybe to lose sight, but don't have a full appreciation for what the role of Secretary of State is, right? There's a lot of discussion around elections and voting, um, but there's other aspects of Secretary of State's office, right? The Corporations Division, the Licensing Division, uh, which is which is critical as well, right? I mean, the again, the role of Secretary of State is an executive constitutional office, is an administrative role within the state, which means there's, there's a host of activities that go on. As you know, if you own a business, you're registering with the Secretary of State's office, right, on an annual basis. Um, you know, if you are uh, a licensed professional in many ways, from a nurse to an architect to a chiropractor, uh, your, you know, your path to being licensed comes through the Secretary of State's office through one of the 42 professional boards. So, you know, first and foremost, when I, when specifically when I mentioned about cybersecurity is that where we are now, you know, one in five small businesses or one in six small businesses go out of business if they have a substantial cybersecurity attack. They literally cannot sustain it. And every single week, every single day, we're seeing more and more attacks against our not just large Fortune 500 companies, but also against our small mom and pop shops who are in no way prepared for it. You know, Bill, the the when I announced my candidacy for Secretary of State, the day after that, the first public uh, speech I gave and the first, not even campaign related, was I was invited to speak to a group of nonprofit uh, executives uh, in North Georgia. And, you know, their questions to me was, you know, Michael, what can we do to ensure that, you know, we either mitigate ourselves against cyber attacks or we, or we build a resilient enough systems to where when we are attacked, we can stay in business. This is, this is an issue that should be on everyone's mind and anyone who owns a business it definitely should be on their mind. And as well as from people that are uh, certified and people that are, are uh, going through our, our professional, um, I'm sorry, going through our professional uh, licensing, right? They are in the same boat, right? Many times they are managing, if not owning businesses and have those same threats and concerns. I'll also say um, from a business perspective, we're providing the Secretary of State a, a lot of information. Right. And the secretary of state is responsible for safeguarding that it's been unfortunate. But the secretary of state's office has had multiple, as I mentioned before, multiple different uh, cybersecurity breaches and data leaks, even doing intra uh, governmental transfers of data. You know, there's a there's a huge cybersecurity leak several years back where, you know, there was information trying to be exchanged between the secretary of state's office and I think in the Department of Revenue. And that led to uh, a, a leak in data. So. Um, it covers all aspects and all facets of where we are now, right? Where we are now within uh, government and, and business and industry, public and private sector, cybersecurity is a key element because there's so much data that's flying around. And we have to make sure that information stays safe. As again, not just from an election side or voter data, but also with business data, right? With people that own businesses, people that are, are professionals in this state, we have to make sure we're doing what's right for them as well. Before I forget, do you want to let viewers know what your website is? Yeah, for sure. Um, if you want to get no more information about me, my background, any of my stances, you can go to www.owensforgeorgia.com, O-W-E-N-S-F-O-R, georgia.com. And another thing I saw on your website, to support small businesses, entrepreneurs, and veterans. And you touched upon about this, but I thought you might, in case you wanted to add anything to that. Yeah, I think it's important. You know, um, we I, I'm, I went through Leadership Georgia, you know, in class of 2018 and uh, super proud of, of going through that program. It opened my eyes, as I'm sure it does a lot of people, to the true economic commerce of the state and not just within 285, right? Um, but down to coastal Georgia, South Georgia, up to the North Georgia mountains, truly understanding that the, the, the fabric of the economic uh, engine that runs the state truly um, is encompassing of all areas within the state of Georgia, not just 
you know, Metro Atlanta. So, you know, when I when I look at those, I see small business, I see opportunities that we have in solar, you know, I see opportunities we have to expand our digital footprint and bring broadband into uh, many parts of Georgia that don't have it. I look at opportunities, you know, around more automated manufacturing and where we're going to need to be in the forefront and looking at getting more people into agriculture, which is still, you know, our largest exports in the state. And I think a lot of that gets overlooked a lot of time. I want to make sure that's brought back to the forefront. As a secretary of state, you know, the, the provisions and responsibilities are, are far and wide. You know, under my leadership as secretary of state, I want to make sure we continue to broaden those and, you know, make sure that we are looking into new technologies, new areas where we can encourage more jobs to come into the state. We can have higher wages and ensure that, you know, we are uplifting all Georgians across the board. And we're tapping back into those 42 boards, right? And those, those professionals that I talked about to give them more opportunities. I want to expand a pipeline of, of entrepreneur opportunities. You know, I went to Georgia Tech. I got my my business degree from Georgia Tech, and, and one of the things that was kind of impressed upon us is to look for opportunities um, to expand businesses, look for opportunities to find opportunities to bring uh, entrepreneurs to the forefront and grow businesses. And that's what I want to do as Secretary of State. You know, so much of it, again, gets kind of marred down into the elections, and it's, it's vitally important, no doubt about it. Um, but we have a great opportunity from the economic perspective, you know, and to really expand the opportunities we have. I'm going to have a couple more questions. It's kind of interesting to me. A lot of people see Democrat Party and they see a portion that are very, I would call them very anti-capitalist. At least as perception of a lot of people you don't sound like an anti-capitalist at all. So, what, what do you th what do you think about that that portion of the Democrat Party? Is that does that hurt? Just political question. Does that hurt uh, Democrats from getting elected many times? You know, it's a couple of things I'll say. That. First of all, you know, I'm a, I'm a third generation military veteran, right? And I joined the Marine Corps when I was 17. I've served under Republican presidents, I've served under Democratic presidents, right? My mission was still my mission to get done. You know, I think um, it's a valid point you bring up, I think about, about the party, the Democratic party, but we could say the same thing about the Republican party, right, in certain ways. Um, to some extent, you're looking at both sides of the aisle right now, they're both pretty big tents, right? I mean, within their own sphere, but I think there's a, there's a lot of ways to, uh, to look across the spectrum, if you will, when it comes to parties right now. You know, my goal is not to play to any political ideology, if you will. My goal is to make sure that as Secretary of State, again, I can have fair, free, secure, and effective elections, and I can help bolster a business economy that, that is going to uh, make sure Georgia remains the number one state to do business in, and also number one state to do business for everyone, you know, and that includes you know, uh, uh, black business ownership, brown business ownerships, ensure that we're uplifting, you know, women into more business ownership opportunities. And yeah, I, I mentioned veterans because I think veterans have a, a fantastic opportunity to have more business ownership, more business stake uh, throughout the state from the vital skills that they've learned while they were providing services country. And I don't think we're doing enough. I don't think we're doing enough for them to ensure that, um, you know, the, the debt that they paid to this uh, to the country uh, is being returned when they get out. So, you know, that's that's really where, where my focus is on. You know, people people love to kind of uh, attach labels and, and put folks in boxes. You know, I'm Mike Lowen's candidate for Secretary of State. Uh, I have a wide, varied background about where I come from, about what I do, um, but my mission is true. It always has been. It's been since I was 17 years old. I have, you know, a unique um, will and passion for service. You know, I, I want to make sure Georgia is the, the best state in this union. I want to make sure that America is the best country in the world. Um, and I want to make sure that those citizens, uh, that all of our citizens, you know, have the dignity they need to have. Is there anything I should have asked you I didn't? Um, yeah. How can people help join my campaign to win this election? <laughs> 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 you know, um, it's, uh, you know, really, really my, my aspect about this campaign is about really looking at moving forward, how we can have um, a, a perspective of looking at the Secretary of State's office, because you know yourself, Bill, I mean, the, the role of Secretary of State for a long time has been much more of kind of a, a, a backroom kind of bureaucratic 
type office. There was, you know, there's never been a lot of excitement around the Secretary of State's office. And unfortunately, when there is excitement around it, a lot of times it's in consternation, right? It's talking about bad things that are going on. I want to turn, I want to turn the curve on that. I want to talk about opportunities that we have within the Secretary of State to truly transform that office. And of course, to rebuild some integrity and, and that I think has been lost, to rebuild some trust that I think has been lost uh, across the board, but also look forward, right? Look at how we can go into a future as Secretary of State. We can, you know, have more people turning out to vote across the aisle. And I'm not just talking about, you know, being a former Democratic Party chair. I'm talking about we got to have more Democrats show out and vote. No, we have to have more people, more Georgians actually show up to vote. Right. My goal as Secretary of State is to have some of the largest voter turnout in modern history. Right. I want to make sure that everyone is, is, is able to come out to vote. Sure, that we that we ensure and we secure the elections, but we at the same time expand it so we can have more people voting. And on the other end, you know, we talked about, you know, expanding and bolstering the economies for people. Um, you know, and that's what I want to make sure we do. I want to make sure that. Um, as a state, we move forward. One of the constitutional officers of this state, uh, and part of that is my charge, is to make Georgia a better state. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing as the next Secretary of State of Georgia. Well, thank you, Michael, for doing this. I really appreciate it. That's a, a episode for today. I appreciate you watching. It's a different take podcast. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. Really appreciate you watching. Thank you.